Our last group to present is the Computer Engineering Home Automation Group. Uh, good morning. Uh, we're the Home Automation Group. Uh, we're the Computer Home Integration Project, or CHIP for short. I'm Booker Ferrier. I'm Sam Lee. I'm Walter Booker. I'm James McDonald. I'm Patricia Revuelta. For a long time now, people have been wondering what the home of the future will look like. A few years ago, by 2000, we were expected to have completely automated homes with robots doing everything we want. Unfortunately, we aren't quite there. Even though the mass-produced technology isn't there, we are able to do it. We were tasked with creating a few appliances that we might see in this home of the future. So a couple of the solutions that we came up with were automated blinds, which are blinds that open and close depending on how much light is coming into the room, and a pantry object scale which measures the amount of food left in, say, a cereal box. So you'll know when you're running out. So, we'll start off this presentation by giving some essential details and background information to the concept of home automation. So, Lean in close. <laughs> so what is home automation? Home automation is the control and monitor of housing appliances and objects using electronic devices. And um, the goal of home automation is for the house to perform activities on its own. And here we have some examples of home automation. The picture on the left is a security system which can be used with a motion sensor. And the picture on the right is a remote control which is a single board microcontroller, just like the Arduino which is the one that we use for our projects. So what is an Arduino? An Arduino is a tiny computer on a circuit board this big. It's very small. It has several in, uh, ports for input devices and output devices. Input devices include microphones and buttons, and output devices include screens and speakers. Arduinos are very cheap. I think they go for about $20 right now, the cheapest one. And the software that you program it with is available free online. So right now, where we are in the presentation is we'll, we'll show you what the components to um, our two projects were. So the basic components of all of the projects that we did today were the shields, the force sensitive resistors, the light sensor, the light emitting diodes, the button, and the servo motors. All right, so this is a shield. I'm talking about Arduinos. A shield is an add-on module that you stack vertically on the Arduino. The one that we used has a breadboard right here, which allows for easier wiring. And there are other breadboards that add additional functionalities, such as Wi-Fi and GPS. Which is the laser button? It's the one. So this is a force sensitive resistor, or FSR. It is a sensor that is able to detect how much weight is being applied on it. Right here we have a square one, but they come in all shapes and sizes. There's also a small circle one or a larger square one. So what's circled on red is an LED, which is a short for a light emitting diode, which is a high intensity, low power light that is becoming increasingly popular, replacing conventional um, light bulbs. And um, it is more efficient than other lights because it requires less energy to be able to power itself. Uh, next we have a button. And a button is a simple switch that returns a one or a zero. One is the on, or giving power to a circuit, and zero is off, which takes away power from the circuit. So a servo motor, which is this big square over here, is basically a collection of small plastic gears that can be controlled by said Arduino. And basically, they're kind of torquey, but they, control, they can be controlled by different electronic impulses, so you can have it turn really slowly or really fast. So the solutions we came up with for our project, as previously stated, were a scale that could tell you how much food you have left and when you need to refill, and blinds that closed and opened depending on the light. So we decided to follow through with these ideas 
and make them out of cardboard and program them with the Arduino. Here is one of them. Oh. This is the scale, and you guys will get to see it work in action. Oh, don't full screen? Okay. Well, right here is the shield that we were talking about before. This is called the Board of Education. Right here is the breadboard, so you can wire it up easier. And more input and output ports right there. And there's the LED. Right here is the push button, which is going to say whether it's on or off. And underneath this piece of cardboard is the force sensitive resistor, but you can't see it right now. So, to use it, first you need to find a full container of cereal or marinara sauce or anything. So, to start, you, press it on, you put it on the scale and then press the button. So, the LED turned green right there. That's because the Arduino is remembering that how heavy the full box of cereal is. So if you're going to pour a bowl of cereal, which is this, it's, uh, our mentors were college students, so they're very poor. They taught some tricks. <laughs> so this is just a normal day. You're pouring yourself a bowl of cereal. That's it. And then you think, hey, do I need to go shopping? So you put it back on the scale. And while it's red right now, you will see that it has actually turned green. And it is green because it, uh, the Arduino knows how much this weighs, and it's more than half of the maximum weight. So let's say you want another bowl of cereal, though. This is, uh, this is our bowl, in case you're going to eat it on the go. So this is a bigger bowl, because you're hungrier this day. <laughs> yeah, so after this big bowl of cereal, you're wondering, do I still have enough left? So you're going to go back to the scale. As you can see, it's red again. And it stays red because it detects you have less than 50%. So it's saying, go get more cereal. You don't have enough. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, those are two bowls. Okay. <laughs> Here is the code or the instructions we sent the Arduino to uh, uh, read and execute. I won't get too much in depth, but right here is how you set it up. Over here is where, uh, how it told the LED to light up green or red. And over here is how it stored the weight and remembered it. This is the same thing, only expressed um, in a way that is easier to understand. It always starts with weighing a container and then turning either red or green. And then if you press the button, then it remembers that weight as the weight of a full container. So now we'll go over to our next project. So the second idea that we came up with was the automated blinds. Okay, so here we have the servo motor, uh, the light sensor, and the Arduino hooked up to a power source. So as you can see, it's turning clockwise, and this is because it's detecting that the room is dark and it actually needs more light. So this is turning clockwise to open the blinds. Now the only way to get it to turn the opposite way and close the blinds is if we introduce a light source. So I know it's hard to see, but now it's actually reversed its direction and is going counterclockwise to let in less light and close the blinds. And the only way to get it to stop is when there's a perfect amount of light, and then when there is a perfect amount of light, the servo will actually stop moving because it no longer needs to open or close the blinds because the perfect amount of light is in the room. Here's a simplified version of how we wired everything up. So here's the servo attached to the power source. And this is attached to the Arduino board, uh, ground, and the input source, which connects it to the computer. And here's the light sensor, also connected to the power source, ground, and the input into the computer. So this was the working prototype that we had built. Uh, basically, we mounted the Arduino on top of the um, there you go. On top, of the, on top of the blinds right here, we had the light sensor on the other side of the blinds facing outwards into the room. Uh, and it would turn via this linkage right here, connect to a gearbox, which changes the positioning of the blinds. So there's the Arduino and there's the gearbox. Uh, so here's the code that we wrote. Over here is where we're initializing the values. So this is the light value of about 200. I believe it's Lux. 
And there, this is where we initialize all the variables, so when to open and close the blinds. And this is how we tell it to open and close the blinds and when to stop moving. Uh, so this is the easier version of the code. So what happens is that the light sensor is red and it determines if it is too bright. If so, it will close the blinds, delay, and restart the loop. If it is not too bright, it will go and ask if it's too dark. If it is not too dark, no, if it is, dark, if it is too dark, it will go, it will open the blinds, go to the delay, and then restart the loop. <coughs> if it is neither too bright nor too dark, it will go to the delay and restart the loop because it needs to do nothing. Now, obviously, these products that we came up with aren't perfect. They're not shelf ready either. So uh, here are a few improvements that we could have made. Uh, for the pantry object scale, we could have had a bigger, more accurate sensor. You saw that the entire thing was cardboard and that we had a cardboard piece where the box stood. With a bigger, ac more accurate sensor, we wouldn't need that. We could have had an LCD screen instead of an LED just because it's bigger and easier to see. We could have had a more compact look or even a way to completely hide it. And Amazon Fresh connectivity. What that does is it allows you to automatically order groceries. <laughs> and <coughs> sorry, and um, the automated blinds could have been improved also with a stronger servo motor set so that the blinds would actually work and it could be faster and co better connect the motor and the blinds and an automatic turn off after a few seconds so that the blinds wouldn't keep turning and then break. Here's some other ideas that we came up with that we didn't follow through on because they were too expensive or we didn't know how to or it would have taken too much time. One was a posture detecting chair that would feel the pressure from the chair and it would vibrate to correct you. Another is car windows that stay open. Uh, you always hear the horror stories of children staying in the car while on a hot day. With this, that wouldn't happen. The, cars would, the windows would automatically go down. We could also develop smartphone apps. We could have one that connected to the blinds, per se, and uh, turn them off through your smartphone, or one that you could automatically order from for the pantry object scale. Another idea could be <clears throat> a newspaper delivery system, which would work basically, you open your front door, and there would be a closed line, and the mailbox would come to you, and you would just open it and get the mail. And then an alarm system with ultrasonic motion sensor, which could, an example could be, um, a car passing by like near your house and um, the alarm system would detect um, the car and the alarm system would go off. And the last idea is a near field communication plus phone, which would, an example of that could be um, when you put your phone on a table, um, the lights turn off and when you, and you take your phone, the lights would go on. So moving forward, home automation is the way of the future. As technology continues to advance and get smaller, faster, and just better all around, we, we strive to make use of the technology. And the Arduino really gave us a way to kind of look into the future. So there are many possibilities you could do with the Arduino, like automated blinds and a pantry object scale is just an example. So if we could do it with very little supplies, time, and resources, it kind of gives everybody else a chance to get into this technological revolution that's happening right in front of our eyes. So basically what the Arduino does is it allows people to get involved in home automation. Uh, first we'd like to thank Dr. Hampton for just polishing up our PowerPoint because if you hadn't it would have been really bad. So thank you for all of your advice. <laughs> Dr. Jones for organizing this and taking us all those cool places like Dow. That was neat. Uh, we'd also like to thank Professor Dougherty. Uh, he helped us a lot. He gave us the supplies and taught us how to do it. We'd like to thank Kirsten, BJ, and Khalid. They were basically our mentors on a day-to-day -day basis. They helped us out a lot. We also want to thank all of the RAs. You guys made it a great two weeks. And uh, lastly, I want to thank all of you guys, all the students, for. Uh, giving me a great summer. It was, it was awesome. Thank you. Are there any questions?
Sergio. Sergio. I have a, um, you guys share how you feel about the Sergio Ramos situation and how he came out with the idea of that logo. Oh, uh, it, well, basically <laughs> what it is, it's since it's com it's a computerized home integration project, we thought, oh, well, computer chip. And, well, a computer chip is square like the base of a house, so why not put a roof on it? And, well, the antenna could be a chimney, so. Also, Sergio told us how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what he was doing. <laughs> yes? <laughs> Thank you. Would someone like to, oh, okay. question? So has this project helped you figure out what you're going to do now? Yeah, definitely. I think it's kind of it's given me a good insight into what computer engineering really is. So it's got to give me a, a good idea of what I'm going to do. I hope this doesn't sound too extreme, but I 100% want to do computer engineering when I take college after doing this because I really like building stuff and programming it. <laughs>